Um, so today, you know what we're talking about? We're talking about the good old 1970s. 70s! Look at that. I was yes. not a part of it physically, but Neither I do like... Neither was I. No, no. But uh, we do we do like that time period. There's a lot of cool things in there. Um, so we've done a few of these in the past, history of different times. Um, you can go check them out up here. Um, but today we're focusing on the 1970s. There's a lot of cool stuff in there. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of stuff happened in the 70s. Yes, yes. It actually is coming back. Like it's some of it funny. is. Yeah. Now that I was like <laughs> looking over the stuff, I'm like, hmm, we're kind of going back to the 70s. Yeah, a there's bit. a few things in here that are are going back. So this is just kind of some history about it, some things you might not know, and we can get started. Um, so how about with money back then? Homes on average cost $24,000 at the start of the 1970s and about 58000 in 1979. Wow. Good luck getting a house for that much, folks. <laughs> wow. Um, and so with jobs in the 70s, Americans made about $10,000 um, a year in 1970. 10000 a year? <laughs> yeah, a year. Oh my gosh. Wow. And uh, wow. 10 years later, um, on average, people made about $17,500. Um, and another thing is, at the beginning of the decade, gasoline cost... Wait for it. Wait for it. 35 cents. <laughs> what is oh it today? Like, two fifty three or something? Or even three... It's over three dollars? It's almost three dollars, but it's always two something. Yeah. Um, Depending on where you live. Right. But it shows how fast it goes up because by the end of the decade, it was almost 90 cents. Yeah, so that's went a up. big jump. Yeah. Well, probably more people were using cars. So. Probably, yeah. Uh, so fashion. 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 That was bold back then in that bold time fashion. period. Bold fashion. Yeah. Um, it says on my paper the fashion of the 70s were quite different than now. It so, yes. Yeah. It is true. They were very different than now. But I see some stuff in there fashion is some stuff that's back. returning. Yeah. So... Pants. Start with pants. So for both men, men and women, the bell bottoms were the thing that to find. Yep. They were the things yeah. on the racks. So if you're going to the store, that's what they were. Right. Um, the women also wore what were called hip huggers, which were jeans that sat several inches below the normal waistline. Mm -hmm. These jeans, Seen or those. dungarees, were very tight, and people often decorated them with embroidery or studs, and may have even bleached them to vary the color. Yeah. Maybe they did that. Yeah. Not, I didn't, Maybe. not a whole lot, I don't think, but they yeah. did do it sometimes. Uh, the men also wore tight jeans and trousers. Velvet mm -hmm. or lame pants weren't unusual either. Yeah. I like I, I think especially like the main designs for the two bell bottoms were like all like full and out all the way down yeah. and then there was like the tight at like the thighs and then it would go out more at the bottom. Yeah. Like, they're two different. Yeah. But it was bell bottoms or it was funny it was like bell bottoms or you wore tight jeans. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you didn't have a middle ground. All right. Um so for shirts, men's shirts of the 60s um, generally included small button-down collars, but men of the 70s wore shirts in solid colors. And loud prints. A lot of, a lot loud of bold prints. Color. Yes, definitely. Loud. Um, and it had with long pointed collars. The print shirts were often found with leisure sh uh, suits. Those were very popular. And some of the designs of the 70s women's shirts were crop tops, tank tops with crop, crop tops. That's Everybody wears back. them now. So they're back. They're That's coming the back. Thing to wear. Yeah. Um, tank tops and flower pattern collar shirts, striped and patterned button down blouses, um, gingham tied French shirts, and others, which people wear too. Gingham tied okay. French shirts. Yeah. That's the thing. Yes. It is. Definitely. Yeah. And women also wore um, what they were called as maxi dresses. Um, which are popular. thing. Yeah. I don't know that. That was a couple years ago. People used to wear a lot of maxi dresses. Yeah, it's they still so have them, but I haven't seen people wear them as much. Yeah. Um, so suits. Uh, as said earlier, later in the decade, leisure suits fashioned from a variety of colors and polyester fabrics ranging from baby blue and mint green to brown were very popular. Um, also in the late 70s, both men and women wore jumpsuits, again, 
coming yeah. back, right? <laughs> Which jumpsuits are one-piece outfits. In this case, they zipped up in the front, and they had a belt. Yeah. Uh, usually, like, a really wide belt. Now, you don't have that, but still, like, the jumpsuits are... Not for the guy. <laughs> yeah. But for the, the girls. You know, yeah. Um, so hair. Now hair was very bold back then. Yeah. Very bold. We're not gonna compare <laughs> we're not our hair is We're not going like back to there, years. I don't think, for most people. Um, but so there's a, a big difference from the sixties to seventies. Um sixties hair was, you know, was very neat and tailored. Um, but it got very unkept and very big in the 70s. So like, take out the bobby pins. <laughs> yeah, we're going big. A good, a good example of this was known as the shag hair. Um, shag hair came in different lengths. Um, the shag hair of the 70s was a soft layered cut with more layers at the crown of the head and thinner hair at the bottom. Um, some shag wearers had bangs while others did not. Um, those who had shag often kept hair out of their faces by using colorful plastic barrettes that could be purchased at the local Five and Dime, which don't really exist anymore. Feathered hairstyle was also pretty big. It was one of the longest lasting haircuts of the decade. Yeah. It was introduced uh, best by the actress Farrah Fawcett in Charlie's Angels, mm -hmm. and was probably the most popular hairstyle of the time because it had a name and it was called the Farrah. Yeah. Um, a lot, if it would cut, like, a lot of these are like, they saw famous people, so like, let's yeah. go do their haircut. <laughs> let's get the fair. Yeah. It was a look with lots of bounce and style, and it was best for people that already had lots of volume. If you didn't have volume and it was really thin, you probably weren't going to pull off the fair. Yeah. So hopefully you had a good hairdresser. You say, give me the fair. She'd be like, <laughs> not going to work. <laughs> yeah. Um, so how about the wedge hairstyle? It was sort of similar to bowl cut. The wedge hairstyle of the 70s was made popular by ice skater Dorothy Hamill, um, who wore the easy cut when she won the Olympic gold medal in 1976. After her appearance on TV, many people wanted to look like her. You know, see the famous people. Here we go again. <laughs> um, the cut was enjoyed by all women, like of all ages, they all loved it, um, because it was easy to care for and could look both sporty and stylish. The wedge was also very popular because it worked for most hair types, except for like the really wavy or curly hair. Yeah. Yeah. It's just funny because I feel like that doesn't happen anymore. Like nobody says like, give me the Natalie Portman. Like, yeah, because well, there's so many different There's kinds, so many different kinds, yeah, so it's harder now. That there's not like one, I feel like the last time that was a thing was Jennifer Aniston had the hairstyle thing. Okay. Everybody wanted that. And now, <laughs> I don't think that happens anymore. Yeah, not, not as common, no. Um, so the 70s afro, can't ta not talk about the afro. I love the afro, um, it's so cool. <laughs> yes, for African Americans, hair of the 70s was no longer cropped close to the head. Yeah. Instead, the afro, sometimes called the fro, was the style of the decade for African Americans. Those who wanted to wear an afro allowed their hair to grow long and extend straight out of their head. Mm -hmm. um, it was most effective for African Americans who had extremely frizzy or curly hair and would stick straight up in the air. Um, and sometimes they would curl or braid it before it was styled so that it would be as frizzy and poofy as possible. Mm -hmm. Many black celebrities of the era wore an afro, including The Temptations, The Jackson 5, Marvin Gaye, and television personalities like Richard Pryor and Damon Wilson. Mm -hmm. uh, no matter what hairstyle they had in the 70s, you could most likely find a few or many bottles of hairspray. Oh yes, very, bottles very popular back then. In every person's home. Now, we still use it, but it was big yes. back then. They no, used it It was lot. way more like you definitely had hairspray. Yeah. Like, I know people who don't even have it right now. Yeah. You know. So how about um, music? So there was different kinds of music in the 70s, just like now. Um, so there was soft rock music. Um, it's best described as like a toned down rock with folk, country, or pop to it. Um, the instruments for pop, for soft rock music, was often um, acoustic guitars, pianos, saxophones, or flutes. Um, electric sy synthesizers were also used as they could make a variety of sounds. And those, I think, were used a lot in yeah, like, all different kinds of I think music. they were. Um, many radio stations would choose to play soft rock. Like, they knew it was very popular, so they played that. Um, some soft rock artists include Elton John, Billy Joel, Fleetwood Mac, The Eagles, James Taylor, Carol King, Neil Diamond, Chicago, Rod Stewart, The Carpenters, and many, many more. Such big names. So, Man, yeah. that was some good music. There's a lot of stuff in the 70s that, like, everybody knows. Like, yes. it just stays. Uh -huh. Yeah. Now, we also can't talk about the 70s without disco, disco music! <laughs> That's the only, like, disco move I know. <laughs> John Travolta. <laughs> yeah. Um, fun fact, I actually can dance the disco. It's really called Hustle. It's actually a type of ballroom dance. Really? 
Huh? We don't actually do this. Oh. There's actually <laughs> steps. But okay. <laughs> um, but anyways, not the same thing. Disco, it was definitely a common thing, and people associate it with the 70s, of course. Oh, yeah. Um, and most disco music uh, was played by a steady bass beat in 4-4 four, four times, sometimes called four on the floor. Mm -hmm. Instruments included drums, strings, horns, electric piano, flute, and other instruments of that kind. Um, and some disco songs included Rock the Boat by Hughes Corporation, Love's Theme by Barry White, and Love Unlimited Orchestra, Get Down Tonight by KC and the Sunshine Band, and Stayin' Alive by the Bee Gees. Stayin' Alive, one of my favorite songs ever. It's a good song. It is. Very catchy. Yeah. Um, disco artists that were often on the top of the charts included Donna Summer. She is often dubbed the Queen of Disco. Mm -hmm. The Bee Gees, the Jacksons, Gloria Gaynor, and Van McCoy. Um, so how about the 70s rock music? Um, rock music was partly introduced by the breakup of the Beatles in the first year of the decade. Um, from that point on, several different styles of rock um, began to appear. So progressive rock was one of the most popular um, genres from it. Uh, it was taken from jazz and classical, and progressive rock brought some of the er era's um, biggest groups, including Genesis, Yes, Pink Floyd, Queen, and Palmer. It wasn't unusual for progressive pieces to include the use of a flute, violin, or synthesizer, again. Um, and then there's punk rock. It got to start kind of in the later years of the 70s. Um, some of the punk bands included The Clash, The Ramones, Patti Smith, and Blondie. And then there's urban rock, also. So many rocks. They're, they're different so kinds many. of rocks. You don't really, but yeah. Um, it appeared as a popular genre of the time. Some of the bigger groups included Sly and the Family Stone, Earth, Wind, and Fire, great group. Cole and the gang only know the one song, but it's great. <laughs> the Commodores and solo artists like James Brown. So the 70s entertainment and tech, also a little bit different. Than yeah, what a little, we have little today. bit, a little bit. <laughs> um, but a lot of movies in the 70s were made for all ages, so it was not difficult for families to find something they could all watch together, yeah. which is nice. Yeah. Um, for the movies, there are many memorable ones made in the 1970s. The movies so, a big time to give for you an example. There's the horror classic, The Exorcist. You have the sci-fi movie, Star Wars. What? Come on. You got, okay. Um, yeah. yeah, and Close Encounters. That's another big one. Yep. And then you also have dramas like All the President's Men. Other 70s films include Rocky. They filmed the show MASH. Well, there's, there's also a movie called MASH. Oh. Well, yeah. when was the show made? Was that, I thought it was the 70s too, wasn't it? Yeah, they were both made. That yeah, I thought so. Yeah. Um, Chinatown, Jaws, Taxi Driver, Annie Hall, Young Frankenstein, American Graffiti. Fun fact, same guy who made American Graffiti made Star Wars. Really? George Lucas. Oh. Um, Kramer vs. Kramer, and then Monty Python and the Holy Grail, as well as The Sting. Again, yeah. so many big names. Yeah, definitely. Um, so then there's the uh, TV show aspect of it. Um, because TV still tended to be family friendly, some of the best shows of the 1970s were sitcoms, and a lot of them were appropriate for all ages. Um, these shows lasted for about 30 minutes long, for about 30 minutes long, and were usually aired between 8 and 9 p.m. before kids like went to bed so they could watch it, or on weeknights when children could stay up and watch their favorite shows. Some of the most popular comedies of the 70s included The Brady Bunch. The Partridge Family, Stanford and Son, Mary Tyler Moore, Happy Days, Laverne and Shirley, Mork and Mindy, MASH, Taxi, The Bob Newhart Show, and Three's a Company. Like, so many good shows in there. Yeah, there's a lot of good yeah. ones. <laughs> um, there were lots of dramas, too, on TV shows, like Adam-12, Medical Center, Six Million Dollar Man, Charlie's Angels, Columbo, McCloud, The Waltons, Little House on the Prairie, and The Incredible Hulk. So, moving on to tech. So, video games. They were just starting in the 70s, mm -hmm. so some of them were Atari and Space Invaders, and then later there was Intellivision. Uh, if you wanted to play video games, though, you had to go to an arcade. Yeah, they were not at home. Right? No. no. But other tech, like pocket-sized calculators, were being invented. Oh, boy. Wow, that, that pocket-sized calculator. I'd like to be back then Well, like... A calculator was huge. Like, <laughs> you don't think about it. The I don't think anyone has a calculator anymore. Like, maybe if you're an accountant or yeah, you it's like all on your, on your but phone. But who actually has like one of those little calculators? Yeah, I don't. Home computers were starting to be available in the 1970s as Microsoft made its debut in 1975, um, but they wouldn't really be common until closer to the 80s. And now, the most exciting fact you will hear today. So exciting! Barcodes. What? 
<laughs> barcodes, okay, so they were invented in the 1950s, um, but they were first starting to be universally used in the 70s. Guys, what would we do without barcodes? I know, isn't that so crazy? They had crazy? to write every, like, price, and they had to stick it on everything. Yeah. Every company, I guess they'd send it to the store, or they'd have to do it themselves. So think about it. Do you it. know how life would not be the same without yeah. barcodes? Well, now it's just like, dude, 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 If you had, like, a big cart full, it'd be like, okay. And then the person number, had to go, beep, 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 beep yeah. two dollars. Beep, 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 eighty cents. <laughs> That's, wow. That, you, you don't realize, like, how much convenience we Barcodes, have now. Barcodes, guys. I know. Barcodes. It's crazy. Um, so that was our history, some of the history of the 1970s. Hope you enjoyed this, learned something new. And if you ever want to go back in time, let us know. We'll come with you. We would love um, to come. We should Definitely. probably do the 70s, because we like that. I think so we should go there. Let yeah. us know when you figure that out. Also, um, let us know in the let us know in the comments below if there are any other um, decades you want us to do. We'd love to do more. Get to all of them. We'd love it. Um, and now it is time for the news. Breaking news! If you were born in the 1970s, you are no longer a child. If you were born in 2018, you are a child. And now it is time for the Taylor Treasure Box. I should have done it in like a, I don't know, a 70s song. <laughs> I couldn't think of it off the top of my head. <laughs> Taylor Treasure Box, come on. <laughs> okay. Uh, I got a would you rather. Truth and a lie. Uh, okay. So, would you rather call 10 people you know and sing happy birthday to them, birthday to them, when it's not their birthday? Or talk I would in a, do that. Or talk in a BOGO Phil voice to them. I think they'd be less confused if I did the happy birthday song. Like, me. okay, you're joking. He like, would not be able to do <laughs> that. No, I wouldn't be able to do either no of these. amount of money that would make you do that. <laughs> but, I'd say, I think it'd be a little bit easier for me to do the happy birthday song. Cause mm, it, yeah. Yeah, I, I wouldn't. Bogo Phil, let's... I wouldn't want to do that. <laughs> yes, no, not yesterday. Two days ago, I either had to go and fill up my windshield washer fluid in my car or my brake fluid. Wow! <laughs> Welcome so to being juicy. an adult. <laughs> These are the things you do when you're an adult. Wow. <laughs> not getting any, like, dark past from you. Nope. Okay. <laughs> wow. Um, windshield, wait, what was the other one? Windshield wiper fluid or brake fluid? <laughs> Let's go with brake fluid. You are correct. Uh, I need yep. a brake fluid. <laughs> so oh, there is a look into Laura's life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the exciting the exciting life of Laura Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, so hope you enjoyed this episode. Make sure to give us a like and a comment. Make sure to subscribe. And after you subscribe, make sure to press the bell so you get all of our videos in your notifications box. And make sure to, to um, follow us on Instagram at Taylor Treasures Official. And we'll see you next time. Bye! Hey guys, thanks for watching that episode. If you'd like to Thank subscribe you. down Please here, subscribe. really appreciate it's not that it. Hard. That'd be awesome. Just press the button. Be and really it's cool. Done. Really cool. Yes. And how about you could watch another video over here? Video. Watch a video. Video. watch a video right here. And you can check out our channel. And we'll see you next time. Bye!